for joining me here on Planner Girl 101 doing papers and layering in Photoshop. After you've opened up Photoshop, you want to make sure that you're in the expert mode and there's different choices for tabbed here. And you'll also want to make sure that you have the side panel over here that is for layers. If you don't have that popped up, you want to make sure you go to window and make sure that the layers button is clicked right there. All right, let's get started. So I'm assuming everyone will be printing at the end of this. So you're going to go to File, New, Blank File, and you'll have this dialog box come up. So there are plenty of sizes for international paper or US paper. Since I live in the US, I will be using US paper letter size, there's also legal in case you have legal paper. And this is where you think about orientation. If you're doing just a printout and it doesn't matter the orientation of the design, you'll just want to have 8.5 by 11 at 300 resolution. Now if you're doing a wrap for let's say a standard or a cashier notebook that is a one-way design and it is um, landscape, you'll want to switch these values. You'll want to make sure your width is 11 and a half and your height is eight and a half. I'm just going to go ahead and do a portrait size piece of paper at eight and a half by 11 at 300 resolution and I'm going to click OK. That will give us a, por uh, a portrait size piece of paper. Now as we move along here, I want to point out a few other things before we move forward. If you see here in this corner, this has your percentage. If you change that percentage, you'll see a larger picture of what you have on your desktop. So it enlarges it and then it obviously has scroll buttons up and down. Over here, one of the most important tools you'll want to know here is this pointer right here. This will make sure that you are selecting the right layers. Now I'm going to go ahead and back this down to about where it was before at 16% so you can get a good idea of how we're working with. Next we need things to work on. So let's go back up to file and click open. And this will pop up another dialog box. You'll want to go to where your digital files are. In this case, I'll be using all of the digital files from the Mommy Lay January Digital Kit. So as you can see, I've got all of the papers that she has provided in the kits along with die cuts. As I said earlier, we're working on the layers of just paper today. So I'm going to go ahead and select some certain types of papers that we'll be working with. So if you want to select multiple files um, and drab, have them on your desktop, you're going to use the shift key or the control key if they're non-continuous. So if I want this blue glitter paper, I will hold down the control key and also select the green blush. And then I'm going to select open. On the bottom part here, you'll see that this is the photo bin. This will have all of the files that you'll be working with for today. Make sure that that's popped up on the bottom of your screen and you'll see it by photo bin right here. And you can always add files as you go along here. I'm also going to pick up the blush stripes. Now I think I've got enough to work with. So as you can see on the bottom of the screen, all of these are individual files. So what you want to do is start with the background paper and I always think of this section as kind of like an open face sandwich. What we're going to do is work with your background and that would be your slice of bread that goes on the bottom. You can also add toppings to your bread. Let's say you want some turkey. In this case it would be the glue bit glitter paper and you'll see that the turkey is now on top of the bread if that makes sense. So this is your blue glitter paper and say I want to add, um, I think it would make a great mix to add some floral on top of it. Well obviously we've added multiple turkeys and lettuce and mayonnaise and all of that stuff on this right hand side but you can't see through it. This is where opacity comes into play. You'll see up here that there's it's a hundred percent. Now whatever opacity you change on this top layer you'll be able to see through the bottom layer. Do you see that? See how that changed the opacity to show that blue glitter paper goes up. Say I want to add the blush stripes. I always think that stripes, floral, and dots always add a fantastic combination. But what happened? This blush stripes is obviously at 100% opacity, so you can't see anything through it. So there's multiple choices at what you can do here. If you don't want this one to be on the top, 
you can change its opacity, of course, and you can see that the blush stripes does come through a bit. But whatever you want predominantly, you would add on the top. So in this case, I'm going to hold down my left click and I'm going to move that blush stripes underneath the floral. Well, obviously this opacity is not enough to show through that floral, so I'm going to go ahead and bump that up again. So as you can see, I've got the floral, the stripes, and the blue glitter all layered together here. That's your basic layering of multiple files, and then you can just go ahead and print that out. I'll show you how to do that in a few minutes. Now, let's talk about this other panel up here. So I'm going to pick this top layer up here, and I'm going to go ahead and pick Overlay. I kind of like this one. You can see that the floral is through there, and if you bump up the opacity, you might be able to see a textured floral. How fun is that? Basically what the overlay does is, is it's melting two parts together to create one. I'm super excited about the way that looks and so I'm going to leave it just the way it is. Now when it comes to printing, what you're going to do is go back up to File, then click Print, and you'll see that I have a dialog box that comes up and you'll see that I have this one selected to print. You have your default printer, make sure it's attached. The paper will be letter size. You'll just leave this as individual prints and then you can select the print size. That's the actual size of the background, meaning the piece of bread that we made originally with the letter size piece of paper. And then you're gonna go ahead and print. Now that I've talked to you about opacity and layers, let's talk about recoloring. There are, there are many ways to recolor, but I'm going to show you three simple ways. First of all, what you're going to do is come over here to the color section, click with your left click on that black square on top, that would be your foreground color, and here is this dialog box that comes up. You can literally pick any color out of the rainbow that you'd like. Say I would like to change it to a nice bright purple. So you'll see that the current box is black, but I want to change it to this purple. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK, and you'll see that that color pops up. The next thing you want to do is click on the paintbrush tool, and then this, if you click onto our file, onto our piece of paper, it will recolor the entire background, whatever color we've picked on that top box. If you don't like that color, you can always undo Paint Bucket by going up to the Edit section. The other way that you can recolor is by going up to Enhance, Adjust Color, Adjust Hue and Saturation, and this is a great way to lighten something. Say I like this green here, but I'm not a big fan of how dark it is. This is where you would change the lightness of that green. You can always click here and reset it to zero if you'd like. You can always adjust the saturation as well, how deep and vibrant that color will be. That's what this bar will do. And then of course in the hue section, this is again just like the last time, where it picks a different hue and changes it to that. So by mixing these three bars together, you can come up with whatever background color that you'd want. We're going to cancel out of that and it will always put me back to where I was before. Now the last way to recolor is by using the existing colors that you have in your kit. I'm going to head and click on this one floral file that seems to have quite a bit of color from the kit in it. This is where you're going to use the eyedropper tool. The color picker tool or the eyedropper tool, if you go ahead and click that and then click anywhere that you'd like the color. Say I'd love this deep maroon color. As you can see, as I left click, that color pops up here on your foreground color. Go back to your photo brin, select the file that you want, then you're going to again pick the paint bucket tool and it will recolor the background once you click to that beautiful burgundy color. What if I wanted to 
print on a vellum or a transparency or an acetate where it didn't have any background color. Go over to your sidebar, select the Magic Eraser tool, and make sure when you're down here near the toolbar that it's the one with the star in the background. Go ahead to your file, left click on the background, and it will delete all of the color that you've selected. The only thing that will now be printed are these polka dots. The white and gray background checks mean that the background is absolutely transparent and the only color that will happen is the color that you'll see on the screen currently. Thanks for joining me today. I hope you guys learned something. Just a reminder that I will be continuing the Planner Girl 101 series with die cuts next week where we take shapes, objects, and even lettering, resize them, color them, and add them to paper layers. Thanks guys. Bye.